Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... I'm over here. Please, please help, help me. Help! Keep calling, I'm coming! Mrs. Peel, thinking that Pandora Marshall had slipped over the cliff edge, started forward. Please, I'm down here. This way! way. Suddenly, Kettridge appeared from nowhere, roaring his motorbike down the cliff path. He skidded it neatly at Mrs. Peel's feet, knocking her backward. She gave a startled scream. Ah! She lost her balance, scrabbled wildly at the earth at the top of the cliff, couldn't get a grip and toppled over the edge. Ah! The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 6 in this story, in which John Steed hears from Mother of Mrs. Peel's fate. And young Watney just can't grasp the significance of the fact that it's... ...all done by Miller. The arrival of Pandora Marshall at the lighthouse had certainly brought matters to a head. She'd been invited down there to work with the real Colonel Withers on his experimental telescope. The telescope was an invention that could transmit and receive sounds along a light beam from the lamp of the lighthouse. Pandora had been caught trying to use the telescope to inform Mrs. Peel, who was waiting for Watney on the cliffs. Later, Barlow and Kettridge had forced Pandora to join them in enticing Mrs. Peel into a dangerous position on the edge of the cliffs. It was there that Kettridge, on his motorbike, had successfully forced her over. Barlow, looking down the telescope, saw the whole thing. Kettridge, from the clifftop, waved a signal of victory. Sir, sure, that's that. One less inquiring woman. You, you forced me to do that. Forced me to lure Mrs. Peel to her death. It's either her death or your own. You were the lucky one. But this is murder. What did you do with the others? The real Barlow, the colonel. Did you... Did you kill them? They are under detention in the cellar, and that's exactly where you are going the moment Kettridge gets back but here. But you can't get away with this. You, you that's enough. Never... Come on. Get down those stairs. Don't try any funny stuff. This gun is loaded, and you know now that a little thing like killing isn't going to stand in my way. Get going. Out on the top of the cliff, Watney had appeared with Major Sparshot in search of Emma Peel. It's very strange. She said she'd be waiting. Uh, there's the car. Mrs. Peel? Emma? Emma, where are you? Not in the car. She said she'd be out here. And that she'd heard strange voices calling to her. Oh, no. Not that again. But it's true, Major Sparshot. I heard them first when Dr. Seligman was killed. And she said she'd be waiting here. Well, there's no other way down. Emma? Mrs. Peel? Emma? No there is one other way down, you know. Sparshot indicated with a thumb towards the edge of the cliff. Oh, no. Well, that's impossible. Uh, uh, better take a look. What? Oh, what's this in the gravel? It looks like a wheel mark. Uh, something skidded and went right on the edge of the cliff. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. The shoe. We're caught on the turf, right on the edge. Here. The that's Mrs. Peel's. And look, tufts of grass pulled out all the gravel torn away. As, a, as, as though a... someone went over. Did she fall or was she pushed? Well, there's another shoe floating down near those rocks down there. Can you see? Where? Oh, yes. E yes, it is. Oh, what... what am I going to tell Mother? Mother? 
mother was still in the swimming pool when the call came through. As he listened, his already sunburned face became almost as red as the receiver he held to his ear. What? When? You're quite sure? Have other people verified this? I don't care to just go on your observations. John Steed, floating nearby, pricked up his ears. What are the chances? As I see. But you'll keep searching. Right. Oh, yes, I'll give you your instructions, all right. The first thing's first. A detailed report. Call me as soon as you hear anything. Right. Well, Mother, what is it? It's early days, early days. And just what is that supposed to mean? I never placed much store by the first report. Nevertheless, I would like you to confide in me the substance of the first report. Well, no give. No point in getting alarmed until we know for sure. Mother. Have a drink, Steve. Mother! I think at the times I've had it reported and confirmed that you were, uh... That I was what? Uh... Missing. A drink? Mrs. Peel? Temporarily, uh, mislaid, I'm sure. How did it happen? I haven't got all the facts yet. Well, just a smattering of facts for circumstances. Fell over a cliff. What? Totally unconfirmed, though. Was it a high cliff? Well, moderately. Yes, I've seen your moderate measures of Scott. Well, what are the chances? I told you, we don't know for sure. What she... are the chances? Uh, well, if she survived the fall, if she missed the rocks, if she wasn't swept out to sea, uh, I'd say the chances were reasonable. Provided she can make a five-mile swim, then she could make home. Uh, rather the worse for wear. The water was deep beneath the cliff, but the currents were swift, and a body in the water at that point would be swept out to sea and round in an arc. Mrs. Peel, knocked half unconscious by the impact with the water, had sense enough to lie still and not fight. She drifted until she noticed that the peak, where the lighthouse stood, was gradually getting nearer. She'd lost her shoes. It made it easier. She struck out in the direction of the shore. Later, much later, and exhausted, she pulled her way up the slippery rocks and lay panting, regaining her strength. The man in Kettridge was playing patience when the knock came at the lighthouse door. He scraped back his chair, walked over and opened it. There was no one there. Kettridge leaned out. Anyone out here? Hey? Hey! Mrs. Peel drop-kicked the man squarely in the face as he bent forward. He hurtled inside, hit the far wall and collapsed. Mrs. Peel picked herself up, closed the door, glanced at the patient's game, put a black two on a red three, stepped over Kettridge and went investigating. Not a year's journey on those stairs at this stage of the game. She noticed a set of steps leading down from the ground floor, but there was no door, or none that she could see, yet there was some form of movement from beyond the wall. It's just got to be hollow. Another room beyond. Well, here goes. Mrs. Peel grabbed an empty coffee mug from a table and began sounding the stonework. Ah, that's got it. The metal door begins about here. But before Mrs. Peel could pursue this line of thought, a whole side of the wall swung inwards. Markin, the bodyguard, came out, or attempted to. Mrs. Peel butted him in the stomach, <laughs> seized him by the neck and threw him into the room. She closed the door and looked about her. It looked more like a cellar than an ordinary room. A rattle of chains nearby drew her attention. Three figures were manacled to the stone. Mm. Right, hold on. I'll soon have that gag off. Oh, oh thank heavens. Oh, but Mrs. Peel, the cliff. You went over the cliff. I, I saw you fall. I was pushed. That was their mistake. I was pushed clear of the rocks. After that, well, I can swim. Let's get these other two so they can speak. Here. Oh, thank you. You must be the real Barlow. Yes, and yes. And he's the real Colonel. Well, hold on, Colonel. Soon have this out of your mouth. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm Colonel Withers. The others are all imposters, foreign agents. They're stealing secrets from the research establishment. Yes, I guess that much. But how? With my retrometer. I came here to help him with it. That's why I was invited to carry out the interview that brought me down here. It's a tremendous achievement. It transmits sound along a light beam. All you need is a shiny surface. And you can receive and transmit. Or eavesdrop. 
But you can explain the scientific details later. Let's get you out of here. Oh, it does will be of any use. You need the key. You'll never break the chains. Oh, I know a man who can open these at the drop of a bowler hat. Oh, I'm afraid you're right. Without the right tools... Never mind about us. Get the retrometer to fetch help. Right. Where is it? It's attached to the telescope in the lamp room. The black box on one side. Plug it into the socket on the lamp. Switch on activate. Focus on any shiny surface that will reflect near the person to whom you want to speak. They will hear your voice, get them to speak, and you will hear theirs. The telephone using light waves. I see. Right, I'll be as quick as I can. Mrs. Peel was in luck. Kettridge was still unconscious where she'd left him. There was no sign of the false Barlow. Mrs. Peel made for the circular stairs that led to the tower. It took some time. 362, 363, 364, phew, 365. The door to the lamp room was open. Mrs. Peel entered so gently that the false Colonel Withers, sitting near the telescope, thought she was one of his men. Girl, it looks as though our job's finished. We've got all the information we need. We should get out. Out is the operative word. What? Mrs. Peel seized one end of the telescope and, timing it perfectly, swung it round in an arc. The far end caught the bogus colonel under the chin. As you said, Mrs. Peel, out is the operative word. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omer.